an epic search is reaching its climax. To crown one British bakery the best. 60 bakeries from across the country competed. I've been waiting for someone to do that with British bacon. Just four are still standing. The challenges keep getting bigger. 100 savoury, 100 sweet. I'm going to be counting. If we don't get the spice mix right, it will be game over for us. Bolder. I don't think I'm panicking, I'm just slightly anxious. And more delicious. Our bakeries are capable of excellence. Nothing less will do. It's really nice. Oh, yeah. So far, so good. Professional pride is at stake. I don't want to give up now. We're going down, mate. We are going down. There will be triumphs. I think this is one of the best focaccias I've tasted in this country. <laughs> and disasters. Well, we'll be making these again. I actually think they're mad. But only one can take the crown. And the title goes to... Of Britain's Best Bakery. It's finals week. And after yesterday's first gruelling semi-final, the competition has reached the capital. Here, four remaining bakeries will be upping their game to prove they are head and shoulders above the rest. To decide who stays to fight it out are expert judges. Mitch Turner, whose cake-making prowess has earned her an MBE, and award-winning chef and baker Peter Sidwell. Our bakeries are fighting to earn themselves a place in the final three. Four very strong bakeries, but at the end of today, one bakery will be going home. To stay in the competition, our culinary contenders must compete in the toughest challenge yet. Today, they must work to a brief, creating three standout bakes for a classic afternoon tea in the bespoke bake. In this challenge, our contenders will be baking for a very special clientele the Chelsea Pensioners, famous for their ceremonial red uniforms. At their retirement home in the Royal Hospital Chelsea, founded in the 17th century to care for long-serving and injured soldiers, the Pensioners will be expecting some medal-winning bakes. We're almost at the final, and uh, I expect what will be presented to us for tasting this afternoon will be very high indeed. We always expect the best, and we usually uh, have it. The pensioners have asked the bakeries for a new afternoon tea menu to include a tasty loaf, the ultimate Chelsea bun, and their own take on a fondant fancy. Only truly heroic bakes will impress these famous veterans. Today we are down to the last four. There is only three places at stake for the final. Uh, we don't want to be the one who's coming out. We're going to give it our best shot. Absolutely. We want to go all the way now. We don't want to go home now. We've got this far. Being second semi-final today, it's thrown a lifeline completely. I mean, this time it's, it's resurrection time for, you know, for obviously myself and some. The bakeries will be working side by side in the same kitchen under the eagle eyes of the judges. Bakeries, this is the second of our semi-finals, the bespoke bake. It's a time challenge and you have four hours. If you're ready, get baking. With three bakes to create for the Chelsea pensioners in just four hours, the semi-finalists begin the challenge with their take on a tasty loaf. Winners of the South East England final, David and Lindsay from the Cake Shop Bakery in Suffolk, have earned themselves a reputation for adventurous bakes and have decided to make a fully loaded focaccia. It's a really delicious um, combination of flavours and the, the actual base focaccias. It's a really nice dough. This soft Italian bread will be stuffed full of prosciutto, succulent figs and rich gorgonzola. To start, they combine a yeast and sourdough starter with water, flour, olive oil and salt. Once kneaded, the dough is left to prove. Then it's on to the fulsome filling. I'm just getting the toppings ready for the focaccia. These ambitious baking siblings pushed it with their bold ideas in yesterday's mass catering challenge. Tasked with making 100 sweet and 100 savoury canapes to serve to guests at the Henley Festival Champagne reception, David and Lindsay nearly came unstuck with their oversized doughnuts and had to remake them. 
and the judges are concerned that they're taking another risk with today's brief. Nice combination of flavours. Mm -hmm. Do you think the Chelsea pensioners are ready for that? I think, for me, something that I get annoyed with is when like, people get kind of patronised in any sort of way and you sort of think to yourself, oh, just because they're old, they're going to want something traditional. These people are people who sort of went into unknown kind of situations, parts of the world, like super danger. Like, these are, these are adventurers, these are exciting people, and so they deserve like, some exciting flavours. David's standing by his bread, so Lindsay tops with fresh figs, prosciutto and creamy gorgonzola before baking. Winners of the Scotland and North East England final, bakers Alex and Di from the Angel Share in Richmond, believe that a simpler loaf will hit the right note with the pensioners. It's a really lovely loaf, but I think if you also... We didn't want to put fruit and nuts and go to kind of complicated because we were aware of who the, the clientele is. Named after their local regiment, the Angel Shares Lancer loaf is made with poppy seeds, black treacle and local ale. Ale in. Do you think that's going to be enough of a flavour to make it a tasty loaf? Well, it has because it's got, yeah, th and three different types of flowers and the uh, black treacle as well, which really brings out the, the whole meal and the rye. Alex and Di may be sticking with simplicity in this loaf, but in yesterday's mass catering challenge, it was the pair's painstaking attention to detail that almost proved their undoing. With individual red currants placed on each of their 100 meringues and 50 individual quail's eggs to shell for their savoury bakes. She's been at it for around 45 minutes. That's a big chunk of their time to concentrate on one element of presentation. So they must be aware of overstretching themselves today. Di starts the loaf with a strong bread flour, a locally milled wholemeal and a rye flour, then adds fresh yeast, water, salt, butter and the all-important treacle and poppy seeds. These lovers of all things local add a healthy measure of Yorkshire ale to the dough. After kneading and shaping, it's left to prove and then baked. Winners of the Scotland and North West England heat, Rick and Tom from Calburn's Bakery in Stockport, are pouring everything they've got into their bakes today. Calburn's got to put everything into it. I've got to put my mum, my dad, my kids, my family, the whole lot's going into this one. So, yeah, it's all out. Like their rivals, the Cake Shop Bakery, they too have decided to make a flavour-packed loaf, an Italian caron bread, so called because of its crown-like shape. It's kind of a bit like a rolled-up rolled up pizza, really. It's like a calzone, and I'm, you know, I think maybe sure somewhere down the line, you know, the Chelsea Spencers may have had a pizza somewhere down the line. So, but you know, it was a pizza with a bit of um. Calvin's loaf is packed with mozzarella, roasted vegetables, and sun-dried tomatoes. To make their Caron loaf, Rick mixes a starter, a natural fermentation of flour and water, with flour, salt and olive oil, before kneading into a dough. I'm back to what I like doing, work, working with bread. So, I mean, my mum always used to say, stop playing with your food, and I think this is, I'm still doing it. <laughs> in yesterday's first semi-final, Rick came under pressure when he spent too much time instructing apprentice Tom. Yeah. Give me the whisk, please. Give me a whisk. It left him spread too thinly for a mass catering challenge. We're going down, mate. We are going down. And he nearly ran out of time. Have you learned your lesson? I've, um, hopefully I've learned the lesson, yeah. So it's, uh, you know, we're going to sort of work together and yeah, talk more. I think that was what was lacking. So, how many is restored at Carmen's? Yes, but we're like a swan, we are. We glide on top, so... <laughs> and Rick's gliding through the first bake adding mozzarella, basil and sautéed Mediterranean vegetables to the dough. Yeah, I'm, I'm trying to put, you know, put my flavours in, but I'm just actually creating, you know, as it's specified, a tasty loaf, you know, and hopefully I'm not going to play it too safe. He then shapes the bread before finishing with an egg wash. Cowburns are giving us a very Mediterranean tasty loaf. It promises to deliver a lot of flavour. Mm. Technically, if it's a great loaf, that could be the tasty loaf of the afternoon tea. Winners of the Central England and Wales final, brothers Remy and David from Maison Macy in Birmingham, are hoping bold flavours will liven up the afternoon tea for Chelsea's favourite pensioners. 
The bread we choose to make today is a sourdough with some rye in it, uh, onion, bacon, and uh, local cheese we've got. It should be very tasty, very moist. Maison Macy's loaf is made with strong white flour and dark rye flour and stuffed with bacon, onion, and a local Lincolnshire poacher cheese. David carefully combines flour, yeast, salt, and a sourdough starter, a naturally fermented mixture which gives the bread its unique flavor. In the first semi-final, these French patissiers showcase their skills to a very British clientele, serving up salmon choux pastry swans and lemon and dark chocolate gateaus at the Henley Festival. It's absolutely perfect, and with the swans for Henley Festival, it's just very spot on. But can the Frenchman impress these patriotic pensioners today? As David works the dough, brother Remy prepares the filling. The Gallic gastronomers hope their nod to such British flavours will hit the mark. We are a French bakery, so we had to push ourselves a little bit more to, to prove that we can be a Britain's based bakery. Once the dough is ready, it's filled and baked for 40 minutes. I'm really delighted to see that Maison Macy have decided to work with local ingredients. That combined with their technical excellence and their refined attention to detail means this should be a fantastic challenge for them. One bake down, but there are still two more to go as our semi-finalists tackle the ultimate Chelsea bun and try to create a winning fondant fancy. It's day two of the semi-finals in the competition to find the best in the land. Just four bakeries are left standing. All are fighting for a place in the grand final. For one, the competition will end today. The Angel Share, Calvin's, Maison Macy and the Cake Shop Bakery have four hours to create three bakes for the Chelsea Pensioners afternoon tea. All have made their breads. Now it's time to move on to the next bake, the Chelsea bun. Back in the 18th century, these sweet sticky bakes were sold by the tens of thousands at the old bun house in Chelsea. Traditionally made with enriched dough and filled with dry fruits, the bakeries must give this British classic their own spin and deliver the ultimate Chelsea bun. At Calvin's, Rick starts by mixing a sponge starter, a pre-made mixture of flour, water and yeast, with flour, sugar, butter and eggs, before adding a zingy extra. With the Chelsea one, I'm, gonna, I'm enriching it with a bit more orange into it. Let's just hope the Chelsea function is just like that little bit of zip in the food. Dedicated artisan baker Rick trained as a pastry chef before opening his bakery in Stockport five years ago. With the help of apprentice Tom, Rick produces hundreds of different bakes from artisan breads to French patisserie. And he's drawing on all his skills today. Dough made, 
Rick prepares the filling. To make these Chelsea buns the ultimate, he's opted for dried apricots, cranberries and figs. They're soaked in a little bit of rum as well, just to give the, the, uh, the, the pensioners a little bit of zip up in the afternoon. So. <laughs> Having struggled in the first semi-final with his timekeeping, the judges are keen to see whether Rick has changed his approach to the challenge today. Rick was running around like a maniac on the Mass Catering Challenge. He's a lot calmer. It seems like a different bakery. That's the one. Yeah, now blue cloth on top of that. Look. I'm concerned that there isn't that uniformity with the Chelsea buns. They're quite rustic. They are. It's going to have to absolutely deliver on flavour. It'll be quite succulent, I think, with the figs. For French patissiers Maison Macy, making a Chelsea bun is a novel experience. Before today, uh, I never made Charles Seven, uh, seen Charles Seven. Yeah, pretty scary. Of what I understood, a Charles Seven should be uh, sticky, full of uh, mixed spice flavor, cinnamon flavor. David makes the dough, adding cinnamon and lemon zest for flavor. For the last eight years, Michelin-trained brothers David and Remy have been delighting the cafe goers of Mosley, Birmingham with their technically perfect patisserie, so they should be well equipped to tackle this very British challenge. That's if they can get their dough to rise. I didn't put the yeast in it, but uh, I noticed some time, so it's all right. If we didn't put the yeast in, uh, in an hour's time, I would be looking at my dough, wondering why it didn't rise. There is no room for mistake in semi-final. Crisis averted. David turns his attention to the filling. They're giving their bun an apple twist, using Bramley apples along with dried fruit soaked in English cider. All the flavour are in the cider and syrup now. We're going to reduce it and use it to glaze the bun. Ambitious modernisers David and Lindsay from the Cake Shop Bakery have grand plans for their Chelsea bun. David has made the enriched dough and Lindsay's creating an aromatic mix of star anise, cinnamon, cloves and nutmeg, all infused in a rich ale, which will be used to soak their dried fruit. This beer is from a local brewery in Southall. The beer is a tally ho and it's kind of really dark and kind of caramelly and it's so delicious and hopefully perfect for what we want. Siblings David and Lindsay took over the family bakery in Suffolk just five months ago. Building on three generations of family baking heritage, these forward-thinking bakers push themselves to stamp their quirky artisan style on everything they do. And today is no exception. This smells like dandelion and burdock. I think out of all our bakeries, these guys really understand taking heritage and tradition and interpreting it without losing what's special about the product. The Angel Share are familiar with this English classic, but they're going all out to create their ultimate Chelsea bun. They're making a vanilla dough, putting a local spin on the filling flavours. We've got lots of different um, dried fruits in there. We've got sour cherries, we've got natural coloured cherries, some cranberries and then some lovely sultanas and currants. And they've been soaked in Yorkshire tea. They're lovely and plumped up. For banker turned baker Alex, using local ingredients in contemporary bakes is at the heart of the Angel Share Bakery. Since opening five years ago in a restored Victorian railway station in Richmond, Creating bakes with Yorkshire flavours has been her driving passion, a theme she's sticking with today. So for your Chelsea bun, you've got a vanilla flavoured enriched dough. Yes. And then your dried fruits are soaked in Yorkshire tea. Yes. Do you think that's the combination to win this one? I think, yeah, I think definitely. Dough made and fruit soaked, Alex is making sure her bun is packed with filling. I don't want to be accused of being mean, mean Yorkshire woman. <laughs> God forbid. Hey. I like the sound of this. They're getting different types of cherries, dried fruits, all soaked in wonderful Yorkshire tea. The bakeries hurry to put the finishing touches to their Chelsea buns. With under an hour to go, it's time to tackle the tricky fondant fancies. These elegant sponge squares, with their silky fondant icing, come in many flavours. They may be simple to look at, but are fiendishly difficult to get right. 
artisan baker Rick and his apprentice Tom from Calvin's are focusing on one particular flavour for their fondant fancies. We've got lemon zest in, in the sponge, um, we've got a nice butter lemon curd, um, uh, we're also working on um, the cake is obviously soaked in lemon juice as well, and there'll be a, a little hint of lemon juice in the icing, so uh, a nice lemon cake. Rick is using lemon in four different ways. Well, I like that focus on the one ingredient, and I really like the sound of this Tom prepares the sponge by combining butter, margarine, sugar and lemon rind before incorporating the eggs and flour. But there's a problem. Um, the mixture's split slightly, so I'm going to slowly bring it back together with a bit, of, uh, a bit of flour at a time. Splitting occurs when the eggs are added too quickly. And it's experience over youthful endeavour as Rick moves in to salvage the mix. Right, yeah, 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 you're, too, you're doing this, I'm not doing this. Now, you see how it's, it's pulling back? Yeah. Yeah, right, that, nice and light, nice and gentle. So every time you're trapping it down, you're trapping air into it, OK? Sponge mix saved. But Tom knows there can be no more room for error. Last round, we just about scraped through. The competition is pretty tough, so still slightly nervous. Gallic gourmets Remy and David from Maison Macy are once again on unfamiliar ground with this next bake. I never actually made fun and fancy before, so it will be a challenge on each other. Two Michelin trained pastry chefs with as much, you know, sort of repertoire of hand finishing skills as I've ever seen. And this concerns you. When you haven't done something, you can only second guess what can go wrong. The Baking Brothers are going with lemon and honey flavoured fancies. We've chosen lemon and honey because it's really subtle in taste and I'm sure the Chelsea pensioners will love it. They make their sponge with butter, sugar and eggs and gently fold in flour before adding honey and sprinkling the mixture with lemon zest. With a place in the grand final at stake, Everything is riding on this crucial first fondant fancy from the French Baking Brothers. The self-taught bakers from the Cake Shop Bakery are going for a more modern flavour with their fancies. What are you making? Chocolate sponge with raspberry jam and raspberry buttercream. It's an oil-based chocolate sponge. I make it at the shop and it's a really good, it's a beautiful chocolate cake. To make her sponge, Lindsay mixes yoghurt, oil, eggs and sugar till fluffy. The acidity in the yoghurt will improve the texture of the cakes. Then she adds flour, cocoa powder, salt and baking powder. Of all of our four bakeries, you are the only one who's made fondant fancies before. Mm. Does that give you some confidence? I know that the key okay, to those is, is not to complicate it too much. While the cake shop go for an uncomplicated bake, over at the Angel's Share, the judges are surprised by Alex and Di's less than simple approach to their fondant fancies. Of the three bespoke bakes today, which one is giving you the most cause for concern? I think, yeah, definitely the fondant fancy, because it's totally out of our comfort zone. Bakers Alex and Di are more used to making pies and tray bakes, but they're creating a delicate vanilla fondant fancy and a chocolate and whiskey version using a Genoise sponge. So for the one product that you're most worried about, you thought you'd make two lots of them? Yes, why not? Okay, then okay. hopefully it'll be on the menu forevermore, we'll see. A Genoise sponge is made by whisking eggs and sugar over a pan of hot water till light and fluffy. After the mix has cooled, Alex gently folds in flour and melted butter before spooning into tins and baking. The method is then repeated with the addition of cocoa powder and whiskey to create the second sponge flavour. The Angel Share are the only bakery today to present two different types of flavour of mm. fondant fancy. Always nice to have choice. It is, but at what expense? Their sponges are in the oven, but the bakeries have yet to tackle the hardest part icing and decorating their cakes to turn them into show-stopping delights that will wow both the Chelsea pensioners and the judges.
It's finals week, and four bakeries are competing in the second semi-final, fighting to win a place in the next round and the chance to be crowned the best. All four are making three tasty bakes to provide afternoon tea for the Chelsea pensioners. The final bake is the fondant fancy, and with their sponges out of the oven and 45 minutes left, the bakeries begin the tricky task of icing these dainty bakes. Cowbans are filling their lemon sponge with apricot jam and lemon curd before covering with lashings of lemon buttercream. This is really showing Rick's patisserie background. This is a classic technique from a pastry chef building technical desserts. And going for a fully focused flavour, Rick is using lemon fondant icing. Chelsea ones look well, the loaf looks, you know, as, my, as one of my loaves should always look, and it's just these little monkeys, Rich, uh, you know, get them done, get them glazed, I'll be more than happy, I think. So, yeah, confident, but I said that before. <laughs> and for a final sophisticated flourish, he's piping a regal fleur de lis on top. Looking good, nice and even baked. Maison Macy fill their honey and lemon cakes with a rich honey buttercream, coat with a thin layer of marzipan, and then, with absolute precision, cut their individual fancies. We make so much effort today. First, because the pensioner we're serving, we owe them great respect, and uh, because it's the semi-final, and it's the day to uh, pull all the stuff out and try to make something who will stand out from the other baker. These French bakers are going all out for a very British spin on their presentation. We're going to make five with a Union Jack and five with an English rose on it. So we represent... They're never going to let you back into France, are they, after this? <laughs> <laughs> Using a shop-bought fondant icing, which he's dyed with food colouring, David's Union Jack fancies are underway. That's the part I've been dreading the most. To get it thin enough so it's not just icing. For two bakers that have never made a fondant fancy before, it sounds like their French flair, their imagination. I mean, we have really seen vision from these guys. They back that vision up with technical ability, and it's an absolute pleasure to watch. I just hope all the elements come together in the time constraints that we've given them. Seeing what other people are doing is it's kind of really good. It's other people are doing some really amazing stuff, so yeah, we just have to wait and see. The cake shop bakery spread their chocolate sponge with a raspberry buttercream and pipe more on top to create the classic fondant fancy dome. Okay, I need to get these ones in. Yeah, I do. Once chilled, they give their fancies a subtle golden sheen by dipping them in a ready-made fondant that they've coloured with caramel. Before dipping in chocolate and finishing with a chocolate oak leaf gilded with gold. Where's your little knife? Whilst all the other bakeries have bought ready-made fondant icing for their fancies, the Angel Share are making their own, from scratch. This is the scary bit at the moment. Alex starts this tricky technique by bringing water, sugar and glucose syrup to the boil. She then pours the mixture over a cold surface, working it constantly to produce a paste. I'm meant to do it in a figure of eight, but I'm just trying to stop it coming off the table. It will have to be heated once more to give it a pouring consistency. The element that worries me the most is the reheating the fondant. It looks OK at the moment. We've got to reheat it and colour it bright red. Their cunning culinary plan is to use the scarlet uniforms of the Chelsea pensioners as inspiration, creating red jackets for the vanilla cakes and a chocolate icing for their chocolate and whiskey ones. Alex adds red food colouring and makes a start coating the first cakes. But the consistency is too sticky and their clever design is turning into an icing nightmare. Well, I won't be making these again. With an overly ambitious two cake flavours and their icing proving problematic, the judges wonder if the Angel share have overstretched themselves again. Do you know what part of me thinks? They've bitten off more than they can chew, because for me, those red ones are not good enough. It's a disaster zone. We're just going to try and do it as tidy as we can, because regardless, we've, we've made our own fondant. Because um, I don't want to give up now. Bakeries, you are into your final minute. You have 60 seconds left to finish your fondant fancies. 
pressure is really getting to them. With the end of the challenge looming, the bakeries must pull all the elements of their afternoon tea together. Tasty loaves, ultimate Chelsea buns and fondant fancies. Bakeries, that's it. Time's up. Step away from your benches. All done. <laughs> it's crunch time. In the state apartments at the Royal Hospital Chelsea, the bakeries are laying on a sumptuous spread fit for these national treasures. I don't know what we're going to have, but I'm looking forward to it very much indeed. Looking forward to going inside and tasting, and hopefully we'll all enjoy it. You can't beat a Chelsea bun. Not really. The Chelsea pensioners tuck into their afternoon tea. And the bakeries wait nervously as the judges move in for the verdict. The Angel Share have served up a poppy seed and treacle lancer loaf, Chelsea buns packed full of sour cherries, sultanas and cranberries, and despite struggling with their homemade fondant, two flavours of fancies, vanilla and raspberry and chocolate and whiskey. Gentlemen, how have you enjoyed your afternoon tea? Fantastic. Very yeah. nice. The brief was to make a tasty loaf for you. Do you think this loaf was tasty? Very. Yeah. Would you go back for another slice? If I could fit it in, yes. Yeah, <laughs> How many right. slices have you had? Four. Four slices! <laughs> what did you enjoy best? Definitely the Chelsea bun. Fruit was very nice, yes. Mm -hmm. Tell me about the fondant fancy. Nice, what? very light. What did you think of the overall that you got here today? Was it good? Oh, very yes, good. yeah. Good standard? Yeah. Oh, yeah. Very good standard. Very good. Very well presented. You three very happy young men. The fondant didn't go right, but they said they tasted great. They especially enjoy, enjoyed the bread, didn't they? Yes, they gave it the thumbs up, so we hope yeah. it's enough. Yeah. Next up, the Cake Shop Bakery. They've created chocolate and raspberry fondant fancies, Chelsea buns flavoured with aromatic spices and local ale, and an adventurous focaccia stuffed with gorgonzola, figs and prosciutto. Have you enjoyed your afternoon tea? Oh, yeah. definitely. I can see, gentlemen, on this stand you've licked the platter clean, but not so fond of the bread. It's not the sort of thing that I would uh, have a go in, shall I say. The bakers that created this wanted to give you a bread that was full of adventure because they mm. thought you were very adventurous men. Oh, well, the unfortunate thing in that case is that I'm pretty staid in my taste. What did you enjoy the most on the table? Uh, the Chelsea bun. I watched you enjoying your fondant fancy, the chocolate and the raspberry. What did you think of the flavours? Red, red, don't worry, don't worry. All right. Well, I can see an empty plate. How many yeah. did you have? I had half a red as well. <laughs> it's lovely to hear that they had enjoyed at least most of it. Um, if, if, not, of it. if not the bread, but focus on the positives. They really like the Chelsea bun. They love the fondant fancy too. Now it's the turn of Calvin's. They've presented lemon fondant fancies, a bold roasted vegetable and mozzarella bread, and a Chelsea bun full of rum-soaked figs, apricots and cranberries. What did you think of the Chelsea bun? It was nice, but it, I thought it was like a little stodgy in it, like... Right. So, Marjorie, what was your favourite? Definitely the Chelsea bun. Was this the best Chelsea bun you've ever tasted? Definitely, definitely. Right. Not too heavy, stodgy, just enough fruit. So what was the favourite item that you tried today? I know it sounds funny, but I like those little sweetie cakes. And what did you think of your Chelsea bun? Uh, not a lot. You didn't like it? No. What did you think of the bread that's got courgettes, onions... Too spicy for me. Right. Much too spicy, yeah. Too much flavour? Yes. The comments that the pensioners made, especially Marjorie, wasn't it? I mean, mm. she's, you know, she was saying it was the best Chelsea bun she's ever tried, and, and then obviously uh, the other gentleman as well, he was, uh, it wasn't particularly his fancy, was it, really, <laughs> no. on, the, on the bread side of things? You know, it may have been a little bit overzealous for, you know, for, for the palates, but there were a couple of good comments on it. Time to see how Maison Macy have fared with the brief. They've served up patriotic lemon and honey fondant fancies, a bacon, onion and cheese sourdough and apple and cider Chelsea buns. Did you enjoy your afternoon tea? Very much. Very much. Very much. What did you think of the bread? What were the flavours in there? It was very, very tasty and I would have... Uh, could have had a nice little feast of just bread and butter. David, tell me about the Chelsea bun. Did you enjoy that? 
Chelsea bun is delicious in every way. There's a load of fruit in there. Mm. So, fondant fancy, did you all try the fondant fancy? Oh, yes. Yes. I, I thought a lot of work had gone into those in the presentation. Mm. Just by looking at them, the whole thing was presented nicely. Nice. Altogether, it's a tea that, uh, of, of high quality, a tea that is fit for uh, Buckingham Palace tea parties. Mm. One of them said that uh, afternoon tea was fit to be served at Buckingham Palace, and I don't think we could have got any better command than this. The Chelsea pensioners' tasting is over, but now the bakeries face their toughest critics, the judges. And for one of them, the competition to be crowned Britain's best ends here. At the Royal Hospital in London, home of the Chelsea pensioners, four bakeries are about to learn their fate. Only three can go through to the grand final. For one bakery, the competition ends here. It's all down to judges Peter Sidwell, artisan baker and award-winning chef, and Mitch Turner, cake maker to the stars. First under the spotlight, contemporary Yorkshire bakers, Alex and Di from the Angel Share. Their simple lancer loaf, gently flavoured with treacle and local ale, garnered praise from the Chelsea pensioners. It's got that real malty depth of flavour to it, and I can absolutely see why the Chelsea pensioners love that. It absolutely worked to fulfilling the brief. The Angel Share were the only bakery to make two types of fondant fancies, vanilla and raspberry, and whiskey and chocolate. But they came unstuck making their own fondant icing. It is commendable to make your own fondant. I just don't think the quality of the finish on these is exactly the standard that we have come to know and expect. Let's taste them. The flavour combination in the middle and the bake is really good. The cake inside has a wonderful flavour, and that is your saving grace. Alex and Di's take on the ultimate Chelsea bun was made using a vanilla-flavoured dough and packed with dried fruits soaked in Yorkshire tea. 
The dough is wonderfully light, yet has that kind of richness about it. The fruit have really plumped up in the tea, and it has given it a wonderful flavour. You put a nice blend of spice in there. It's a great Chelsea bun. I'm not sure if it's the ultimate Chelsea bun. Next to be scrutinised, quirky baking siblings David and Lindsay from the Cake Shop Bakery. They served up an adventurous focaccia stuffed with prosciutto, figs and gorgonzola. But it didn't go down well with the Chelsea pensioners. It might not have hit the brief for the Chelsea pensioners, but as a flavour focaccia, I think that is delicious. I think this is one of the best focaccias I've tasted in this country. <laughs> <laughs> I think it has a really beautiful flavour. It has a really nice, spongy, aerated texture. It's a brilliant bread. Well done. Can their chocolate and raspberry fondant fancies, dipped in chocolate, deliver more of the same? Visually, I think they look really refined and actually really very beautiful. That is a very rich fondant fancy. The intensity of the chocolate on the outside is absolutely needed to balance the cake inside. The flavour's there, but it's all chocolate. The raspberry isn't head and shoulders right next to it, and I think it needs a little bit of balancing to get it really, really, truly amazing. For their Chelsea bun, David and Lindsay use an aromatic blend of star anise, cinnamon, cloves and nutmeg infused in local ale. I think it's got stickiness, it's got the sweet sugar around the edges, it's got depth of flavour with the fruit and the ale in there, and I think it is a very special Chelsea bun. That is the kind of bun I'm looking for, for an ultimate Chelsea bun. Time for the Michelin-trained brothers from Maison Macy to show off their bakes. Their bacon, cheese and onion sourdough was highly praised by the Chelsea pensioners. I can see why the Chelsea pensioners love that. It has got a wonderful depth of flavour. It's delivered that wonderful savoury, salty flavour wrapped up in a very tasty bread. They'd never made a fondant fancy, but David and Remy's patriotic cakes were declared worthy of an afternoon tea at Buckingham Palace. It's the best comment we could get from them. I'm absolutely amazed the Chelsea pensioners didn't highlight the honey in that cake. That is absolutely the first flavour that came out as soon as I bit into it. This wonderful, quite rich, earthy honey flavour coming through in the cake. And that was lovely. I think technically this fondant fancy is really well done. I just kind of feel like it's missing something in the middle. A really fruity burst of jam or something would have just really balanced that one out. A Chelsea bun was another first for these French frères, but their twist, using Bramley apples and a local cider, proved another hit with the pensioners. We asked you to create the ultimate Chelsea bun. I think you may well have just about got there. I think the blend of cider and apple in there works beautifully. That is technically very well executed. I actually think it is a little bit over moist. I think just to ramp back a little bit on the liquid, and that would be the ultimate Chelsea bun. Finally, it's artisan baker's Calbans from Stockport. The pensioners thought their Italian Caron bread, stuffed with mozzarella, roasted vegetables and herbs, too spicy. I think visually, it's really exciting. I just wonder how far from the brief you've gone on this one. I'm not sure the Chelsea pensioners were quite ready for this bread. That really is a tasty bread. It is packed full of extra ingredients to ensure that it really delivers that wonderful savoury hit. I think you've really encapsulated the Mediterranean in that loaf of bread. It's delivered a lot of flavours. It's not the most technical of breads, but the choice of ingredients work incredibly well. The judges voiced doubt over the rustic style of Calvin's fruit pack Chelsea buns and the pensioners gave these mixed reviews. 
To say your Chelsea bun is a little rough around the edges, I think is an understatement. It really is quite rough and rugged, <laughs> isn't it? <laughs> The fruits that you've chosen, the figs, the apricots and the cherries, have a wonderful fruity yet tartness about them, and I really like that. The taste really does deliver. You've got a wonderful spice to it. You've made a great decision on your dried fruits in there. They do all work really well. It's just a shame you hadn't baked it and made it beautiful on the outside as much as it is on the inside. Rick and Tom opted for a lemon-flavoured fondant fancy, incorporating the zingy fruit into the sponge, curd filling and fondant icing. The cake itself is actually very well baked. You took a lot of time to make the lemon curd. I would have liked to have seen more of that in the fondant fancy because that's where the tartness, that's where the intensity of the lemon is coming from. I was expecting a bit more punch on the lemon. If you're going to do a lemon fondant fancy, it needs to absolutely scream lemon. With the tasting over, it's a nervous wait for the bakers as the judges decide who will be leaving the competition today. Angel Share delivered us their Lancer bread. I thought it had a wonderful flavour. It was really appropriate for the brief. And they have created three very strong bakes that all serve to fit that bespoke bake. But what about their fondant fancy? It didn't work out that well. well I'm yeah. really happy with what we've done so far yeah. and uh, I think we've stand a really good chance. I thought that the Cake Shop Bakery were the best technical bakers today, but I felt that they were too adventurous. They hadn't really thought about the end user, and I think the flavours were too strong. I feel like we've got more to show, more to offer, mm. and I'd love the opportunity to be able to do that. Mason Macy, out of all the bakeries for me, delivered the ultimate Chelsea bun. But I don't feel they maximised the flavours on their other bakes, particularly the fondant fancy. It was very sweet. We really don't want to go home. We want to, to carry on and go all the way to the final. Calburn savoury bread was the nicest product I tried on their table. Their fondant fancy promised to deliver an absolute burst of lemon. I just didn't get that. If you're going to put all your eggs in one basket on one flavour, you've absolutely got to deliver, and it didn't on Cowburn's fondant fancy. You know, we went home now, it'd be a long journey home. But, you, know, you know, the journey never ends. So. All four bakeries have presented their bespoke bakes. There's one bakery that we have to send home. Going into the finals now, the pressure is going to be ramped up, and I think there is one bakery that isn't quite up to that level yet. And they need to go home. We need to go and tell them. Okay. There are three places in the final of Britain's Best Bakery. And the first bakery going through is... Cake Shop Bakery. <laughs> <laughs> the second bakery going through is... Maison Macy. With only one place left in the grand final, it's between contemporary Yorkshire bakers, the Angel Share, and the artisan bread bakers from Cowburns in Stockport. The third and final bakery going through is... Angel Share. That sadly means we have to say goodbye to Calburn Bakery. Hearing our name run out first, I've just felt utter relief. We're absolutely delighted yeah. to have got through, but I think we think it was a very close thing, and I think we know that it was skin of our teeth. To come this far is, is you know, is, one, one massive achievement, and it's something I'll never forget. No, it's down to la crème de la crème, as we would say. Uh, we have to pull everything we've got out of the bag to make sure um, we can compete. Next time, it's the first day of the grand final. There you go, seven pounds change. And the judges are upping the stakes with a market selling challenge. Pound each for quiches. I'm knocking 50p off just for you. But as the pressure mounts, Oh, come on. C'est tout cramé en dessous, en fait. 
Some are facing burnout. I'm pretty sure not, not everything will be done in time. If it's not baked, it's not going to market. Only one can take the crown of Britain's best bakery. These are not baked.